welcome to another episode of Compounds Classified. As always, this is your host, Kai McGee. In today's show, I'll be helping you to better understand the chemical compound known as cyanide. Cyanide was initially discovered as a substance by Carl Wilhelm Scheele somewhere between 1757 and 1786. However, it was not until later that it was recognized as a compound. In 1887, John Seward MacArthur and Drs. Robert and William Forrest identified cyanide's chemical composition. There, in Glasgow, Scotland, the modern process of creating cyanide was developed. By combining methane and ammonia in the presence of oxygen with the addition of platinum to catalyze the reaction, hydrogen cyanide is formed. Cyanide is the general term for any carbonitride in the cyano group. In every form of cyanide, the core of the molecule is comprised of a carbon atom triple bonded to a nitrogen atom. Cyanide in its basic form is a negatively charged ion and is highly reactive. As a result, there are many different forms of cyanide within the group that differ depending on their inherent bonds with compatible elements. Sodium cyanide and potassium cyanide, for instance, are crystalline and come in the form of salts. Both are solid in phase when at room temperature and are visually clear or a cloudy white color. Sodium cyanide is mildly corrosive, though not to an extent that makes it particularly dangerous to contact for short periods of time. Both sodium cyanide and potassium cyanide are highly reactive to acidic substances, and when exposed to aforementioned acids, will undergo a hydrolytic reaction to form hydrogen cyanide. Hydrogen cyanide is a highly toxic substance, both in liquid and gaseous forms. As a liquid, it is slightly acidic and pale blue in color. Its boiling point is at 78 degrees Fahrenheit, of which it transitions into a deadly gaseous form. Hydrogen cyanide gas is colorless, and it smells similar to bitter almonds, though the ability to sense that scent is a genetic trait present in only a fraction of humans. Hydrogen cyanide tends to be the cause of death due to cyanide poisoning, as other cyano compounds undergo reactions leading to the gaseous form quite readily. Even a low concentration of hydrogen cyanide can be deadly if exposure exceeds an hour, and high concentration can result in death within minutes. At 5.6% concentration, the gas is combustible and explosive. Hydrogen cyanide can also be dissolved in water to form hydrocyanic acid. The effects of cyanide on the human body are extremely deadly, resulting in total organ failure after only a relatively small amount of exposure. Hydrogen cyanide fills the lungs and enters the bloodstream, quickly making its way throughout the body. Diffusing into cells, the substance binds to ferrous material within the mitochondria, essentially inhibiting the transfer of energy through electron chains. Without the ability to convert adenosine diphosphate into adenosine triphosphate, the cell is unable to maintain itself and will die. The cardiovascular and nervous systems tend to be the first affected by the widespread cellular collapse, and hypoxia of the heart and brain quickly lead to death. The most common application of cyanide is in mining as an agent used to treat ores, a process involving a slurry of sodium cyanide diluted in an alkaline liquid. The mixture can be applied to dissolve ores such as gold and is useful for clean extraction. With its relatively simple production method, versatility in physical forms, and high toxicity, it's often used in suicides and homicides as well. A selection of major cases of its use in manslaughter are as follows. In 1938, Abram Slutsky, head of Soviet spy service, was assassinated. He was found dead by a tray of cakes and of tea which had been tainted with hydrocyanic acid. On April 12, 1945, during the collapse of Germany's military forces, Hitler Youth distributed cyanide capsules to audience members of the final concert of the Berlin Philharmonic in a mass suicide. On April 30, 1945, within the Führer bunker in Berlin, following other mass suicides, Hitler's staff was equipped with cyanide capsules in preparation for their own termination. Adolf Hitler and his wife Eva, having ensured that they would be disposed of and their guards following after them, each swallowed a cyanide capsule. With no time to spare, Hitler took it upon himself to end his life by gunshot before the poison could cause his death. Both bodies were taken to his garden and set ablaze by his staff before swallowing their own capsules and perishing. In 1945, on the 23rd of May, Heinrich Himmler, leader of the Nazi Schutzstaffel, 
was captured and brought to the British 31st Civilian Interrogation Camp after attempting to flee the country under an alias. During a medical examination, as a doctor attempted to examine his mouth, he bit into a hidden cyanide capsule and collapsed, dead within minutes. In 1959, Stepan Bandera, a man involved in the assassination of the Polish Minister of International Affairs, was shot with a cyanide-laced bullet by an agent of the KGB, the Soviet Committee of State Security. On November 18, 1978, a massive suicide and homicide occurred in a compound in Georgetown, Guyana, which has come to be known as the Jonestown Massacre. A communist church organization called the People's Temple Agricultural Project had migrated to the new location from the United States, and under the guidance of founder Jim Jones, members were forced to live through difficult conditions and denied the right to leave. When the word spread of the poor life quality in the compound, the United States representative Leo Ryan left to visit the area. After offering to escort willing people out of the compound, Ryan was attacked at the airport and killed, along with those who had agreed to join him. The incident sparked urgency in Jim Jones, and he ordered everyone to assemble in the pavilion. He urged the congregation to drink poison flavor aid, laced with cyanide, saying that if they didn't, the United States troops would inevitably arrive and torture them as well as their children. After threatening the people with guns and crossbows, Jones convinced the 912 men and women to kill themselves before bringing his own death about by gunshot. Only a small number of people survived the massacre. And now that you're all well informed on the chemical and historical connotation of cyanide, go forth as an educated and enlightened individual. I mean, just picture all of the things that you can do with this newfound knowledge. Uh, well, just don't go around killing anybody or anything like... Uh... Roll the credits!